Welcome to our green screen studio. Don't look around too much. We're in the middle of construction, so I know it's a mess. But today I'm building movable rolling acoustic blanket wall panels that we can use to move around in the studio and help with our sound and echo. Now this is a big room and what you see is only quarter of it. So when we shoot, usually Jeb stands right here and this is the camera that's shooting him but the side of the room on the right and behind the camera and that corner over there it's completely empty. So we have echo obviously because these walls are painted not fabric so they do reflect sound. We do have some panels but they are definitely not enough. So I found this solution from Caleb Pike DSLR video shooter. He made these for himself and he put up a guide. So I decided to build the exact same ones because I spent months looking for something like this and I couldn't find anything. But his solution was perfect. I did run into a couple of issues. So if you watch his video, which I'm going to link up here or, or here, the way he built it, uh, it looks like that he's using his old blankets. If I remember correctly, when he built the top railing, he used five carabiners and hooks to mount his blanket. Now the blankets I bought today, well actually not today, but this week, have eight grommets instead of five. So when I purchased everything beforehand and I arrived to the studio where my package was waiting, I realized that I don't have enough of anything. So I had to go back and buy some more. That's one. The second one, the screw that you need for the Kupo mount, which you didn't say specifically, I already have it installed right here, is a half inch screw that is two inches long and you need two fender washers, pretty standard. And when you drill the hole, you don't need to drill five eighths. You can just drill a half inch hole. It will make it a little bit more stable. Also, these blankets are sold as six by six. So when you go to, let me show you. So this is the uh, blanket, producer's choice sound blankets. I purchased the one that's black on one side with grommets and white on the other because I wanna use these for light reflectors too. Now these are advertised as six by six. So as he says in the video, you have to buy a, an oak board that's six foot. Unfortunately, these blankets, well, not unfortunately, they are larger. So I bought six foot oak boards, but they were short because if you measure these, the blankets should be 72 by 72 inches as six foot should be. But if you measure these, these are more like 77 to 80. So actually closer to seven feet. So I had to go back and exchange the boards I bought to seven feet boards. And these have just a tiny bit overlap on, the, on, on both sides if you mount it in the middle. His mounting solutions uh, were carabiners put into these screw eyes. So I also purchased the carabiners and screw eyes. Now, because I needed a whole lot, I realized this is going to be really expensive. So I think a better and cheaper solution would be to get screw hooks. These are size six. I measured it, they fit. So you can just drill holes, put these into the wood board and hang the blanket on it. I don't see a major difference in flexibility. You can still take it off and flip it over if you're only mounting one blanket or if you want to put it into storage. So I'm going to do both because I already purchased both. Drilling and everything should be fairly simple. The rolling stand is exactly the same impact that he used in the guide. We actually use this for our light stand. So the light that lighting me right now and the talent when Jeff's here is the exact same uh, rolling impact, eight and a half feet tall stands. They also have an 11 feet version, but that would be overkill for a blanket that's only seven feet. So 
this would be more than enough. And these are really extremely sturdy. You can put some sandbags on it if you want to make sure that they don't trip. So this sound blanket is going to be good for home use if you do live streams or Zoom meetings or whatnot. You can position it right next to you to create two walls. So basically you need two and you just put it outside of your frame. But because you're sitting between them, there is no echo bouncing off. Uh, if you want to, depending on your room situation, you can put behind your camera too. And especially if you're recording in big open rooms in your house. Those tend to be really echoey and these help a lot. Put it in front of windows and doors to kill the reflection. Now his video has a bunch of sound tests that shows the difference very well, so I'm not going to go into that. I just wanted to give you an update on how to actually build it and what changed since his guide came out. Even though it's only like about a week old, I was unable to follow it completely because certain things changed. Um, maybe it's just me or maybe it's just a production batch, but all the blankets and I got like six are the same. So the six foot board would not be long enough. And also the screw that you need to replace in the Cupo adapter, I did not know what it was. So I had to wait for them to come in and go to buy the screws. But I'm telling you right now, they are half inch screws and you can go with one and a half inch length or two inch length. Probably recommend the two inch to get more grip in there. Um, and some fender washers. Those are really simple to get. So I'm going to get into building one of these and then I'll join back as soon as it's ready. So this is what the finished board looks like with the Kupo mount. It comes off really easily. There's just one knob. The two inch screw is perfect. So that's my recommendation right here. The locking washer made it easy to even hand tighten it. You don't need any tools. You can just tighten it with your hands. The next step is to lay down the blanket and then mark the sides where the grommets are and then drill pre through some holes. So when you put in either your eye screws or your, your hook screws, they go in easy. And depending on if you're doing a double sided or a single sided, you have to do it on both sides. Now this one is going to be a double sided. Uh, the rest is going to be single sided. If you're doing a double sided, it, you can hang one black on one side and one white on the other. So you don't have to take it off and put it back on backwards. You can just swap it over to switch sides. It's really fast. If you're only using one side because you need more light or less light, just put that side on it on one side. Don't worry about the rest. And especially if you're putting it next to a wall where the other side doesn't matter. But since we're heavy, heavy, have an open space. If we have this in the side like here, then we can use it for both sides. So it doesn't matter which side we're recording on. We don't need to do some magic and flip them over. It works. So in this studio, I'm going to have a double sided in the other two studio that we're building. Single sided is fine because those studios are smaller and they have a specific purpose. So when we have these ready and we close the doors, we can just move it right in front of the door and have that completely sealed so we don't have reflected sound coming from the door surface. And lock it up and good to go. Let's do some more drilling. Ladies and gentlemen, the first acoustic blanket on rolling wheels is ready. It did take me some time to drill all those holes because you have to drill 16 holes and then put the eyelet in and then attach the blanket. But it turned out pretty good. Now, got orange carabiners because it sells gravy. And if I turn this around, you'll see the other side is white. And what it does is, because I have lights coming from there and there, if I look at this way, I get light reflected on me. So it should fill up the right side of my face. If I turn it back to the black side, it's not going to do that. It will stop the light. So 
there's no reflection on my face. And also, if I speak into it, you should hear a clear difference on what it sounds when you speak into the blanket and not into the blanket. And that's because the blanket's purpose is to absorb sound. So when I speak here, sound travels everywhere and bounces off of everything. If I speak here, it goes into the blanket, but it gets absorbed, so there's no echo coming back that hits the microphone again. So you should hear at least a little bit of difference. Now this is a studio, so when you come in here, it feels like this is dead quiet. It's not exactly that quiet, but it is much more quiet than any other building or room that you're in. So when you walk in here, you, f you can hear the difference. It's quiet already, but because of the size of the room and because of our si size set sizes, this is what's going to help reduce that sound echo that we experience in here. So this specific panel is going to live on this side of the shoot, um, mainly because this is the reversible one. So we can use it either on this side or the other side. And the next one I'm building, it's almost done, is going to be a single-sided version of this with black that's going to live on that wall that you guys can't see right now. But that's a black wall already. The only problem is that it's plain. So it does reflect. Now, when I put this over there, it's still going to be black, so it would not affect our lighting, but it will affect our sound. So whenever we record, we don't get a reflection of sound from that wall that would bounce into the boom mic that overhangs down here or to the wireless mic that's clipped on me right now, but we use the same exact microphone when we record in front of the green screen. So this is the panel, and if you want to, you can take off the whole thing, uh, close the legs, and store it. Uh, you can also raise it up and down. This is the lowest possible with the legs, so I am six foot two, and this is probably about seven and a half feet, uh, is what it is, it sits at the top, and there's about a half a feet. Uh, on the bottom where the wheels are, but it is relatively large and it will fill up this space nicely. So I'm going to finish the uh, next one and uh, test it out the next time we're shooting on a shoot day. I hope I gave you some good information about this and if you're building something like this, make sure you send a thank you message to Caleb Pike at DSLR Video Shooter and maybe also me just because I had to add a couple things to this. But I have to say that it definitely works. It definitely is a nice sound absorbing blanket. And the price is very reasonable. When I looked up sound absorbing panels for studios, they came out to about 400 a piece for a four by two uh, panel on a stand. Now we would have needed a lot more of those to cover these sections. And these stands with the two blankets, including the rolling stand and all the materials, will run you uh, about $300. If you only do a single-sided blanket, so you don't put two on it, just one, and you want to flip it around when you need it, then you can save $50. They run about 40 something plus shipping. And if you don't need a rolling stand, you can save about $50 on the stand that just stands. Now, if it's a permanent setup, that might be a good solution for you or your room or your studio. If you want to roll it or if you want to use it in multiple rooms, then this is definitely the way to go because if I wanted to take this apart because we're shooting in the next studio, I can take it apart in a minute move everything over, build it up again, and it's ready to go. It will take me less than two minutes to do this, to move it from one studio to the other. Finish the second panel. It's right there on the wall. I know you probably can't see it. Maybe you can. Uh, the white side is facing to the wall, the black one facing me. So currently, if I stand in the middle, these should affect the way my sound is. I definitely like how they turned out. 
they are easy to move. And if we wanted to make a smaller set or a bigger set, we can easily expand and move them or use multiple. But these are also good if you're not in a studio. So I recommend this highly to anybody who records video or any type of audio in their homes or office because if you have something like this that you can move and easily break down and take with you, then you can get much higher quality audio recorded basically anywhere. And especially true if you have echo in your sound. So thanks for watching again. And I hope you enjoyed this video.